Do you know which hand I'm going to be talking about with you here? I think if it's a good one, then yeah. It's 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 like the best hand from the three days in my opinion. So you obviously know which hand. So yeah, okay. So Hollywood Haxton, he raised it up early position. He had Ace Queen ten three double suited. Uh, Brandon Adams called the position with aces. You completed the big line. Ace King eight two with the King two of hearts. Flop comes down. Jack of diamonds eight of hearts four of hearts. So Hollywood had nut flush draw and the gut shot. You had second nut flush draw with that middle pair, and you had the backdoor diamond. Blocker, it potentially comes that runner, runner, diamond. So Hollywood, see better third pot. Brandon called, and then you called. So we can kind of take it from there. Yeah. Both Brandon and Phil call. Pot doubles in size. Queen of diamonds rolls off on the turn as Galfon now has a Broadway draw. Haxton picks up a Broadway draw of his own along with a pair of queens. Adam still is the leader with the two aces, but the texture is getting worse and worse for his holding. You won't enjoy seeing this bet from Haxton. Forgot about the thing. Huh? Forgot we can't even look at our foot. Or we have to like stand up. Sure enough, the two aces go down. As well. Galfon check raises pot after the bet of 4,400. <laughs> it was jack eight, uh, four. So queen on the turn, right? Bringing yeah, queen uh, of diamonds on the turn. Yep. Jack, di jack of diamonds, eight of hearts, four hearts. Yeah. So turn brings double flush draw on the straight. Um, Ike bet, I check, Ike bets again. Um, and Ike bet pretty small. Yeah, 30, um, bet 30, 4,400 into 13,000. Yeah. And so. <clears throat> The, the thing about Ike is you're not going to get like a, a sizing read in terms of like, oh, he's betting small here, so he's weak. Uh, but, but what you'll get is, you know, he's got a well thought out strategy. And in order to bet small here, he's going to have a range that includes a lot of like, he'll include some very strong hands in it. But for whatever reason, he's determined on that turn, you know, I want to have a high betting frequency here with a lot of like mediocre hands. Um, and I don't necessarily, I don't know his reasons behind it, but but what's going to happen is, you know, he's not always going to have a weak hand, but he's going to include a range that's going to have a lot of those like decent but not great hands. That's just like what that bet size implies to me. Um, Brandon folds, and um, my hand's pretty bad, and I can definitely profitably call. Um, nut gut shot, second nut flush draw, and the uh, you know backdoor nut flush draw blocker, but uh, and the pair obviously. Uh, I definitely have a price to call, but with stacks the way they are, um, I, I have a pretty good, like, I, I, I don't get re-raised on the turn often at all. I think, I guess with the nuts I do uh, reasonably often, but I, I don't think that that's, uh, I, I don't think he's very likely to have the nuts. Obviously he can, but like, I think it's a very small part of his range. So um, I don't necessarily expect him to fold the turn very often, especially when it's that draw heavy. But if you look at the way that the board runs out, like on every brick, I just continue betting, and it's really likely that I win the pot, I think, in those scenarios. Um, and then on hearts, I think depending on the heart, I can check or bet. Um, and then on diamonds, depending on the diamond, I mean, I'm usually going to bet. If my hand's that weak, I'm, I'm going to continue betting. Um, and then I think I think on board pairs, I tend to lose in less than eight, and then I can probably check call. But, um, but really, it just like my hand check calling, you know, I have more than enough equity, but... Uh, when I check raise, even if I'm getting called a lot, my like, I realize so much more than my equity just because I think it plays out so well on rivers. And, and, and it so happens that, you know, he had my second up flush draw covered. Right. So it was going to go pretty poorly for me on those heart rivers. I was just, I was excited for every river. 26 more. And 
he makes the call. $66,000 in the middle as we head to the river, which is the nine of diamonds. Galfond holds the ace of diamonds and could potentially look to represent the nut flush, even though Haxton has made a queen high straight. $46,000 bet with a pair of eights. Um, but it looks like I, I got the one that I needed. Um, and the, the Nine of Diamonds River is especially good just because it leaves me with so few bluffs. Um, because let's say I check raise with a similar hand, but you know, instead of um, instead of like Ace King Eight, uh, Deuce, like Ace King Eight, uh, or like Ace King Eight Ten or Ace Ten Eight Deuce. Um, so I end up with a straight. There's just so many potential bluffs that I have a high diamond blocker that I end up with a straight with that just a, a really, really profitable bluff spot. It's really hard for me to have enough bluffs. And actually, when he started thinking, I was I I said this to him after, but he started thinking I was getting mad. I was like, why are why are you even thinking? I can't have any bluffs here. Uh, like unless you have three diamonds in your hand, I don't I don't know. Uh, and he thought a little bit with the straight. I guess it's a big pot, so he wanted to think, but. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it was a perfect river for me to follow through on and uh, and make me look good. Yeah, that's what I was, was thinking for so long there. So you, you said, so the pot was 66,000 on the river. I think me and Jane Annas were streaming during it. We're kind of wondering what size you're going to go with. So when you're thinking about going with pot there compared to two thirds pots, you end up betting 44,000 or 46,000 rather. You know, what do you, how do you think, do you think it differs that much in terms of between 46 and between 66? What do you think differences are between choosing the sizes there? To be honest, I think that. I don't think I'm a sizing expert. Um, I think it's one of the weaker points in my game. And I tend to, it might just be habit. Like I, I've had kind of similar sizings for the last 10 years and I'm just used to them. <laughs> and uh, I think that when you adjust your sizings, I mean, at this point I probably just should cause, <laughs> cause you know, it's been long enough. But when you adjust your sizings, you have to, uh, especially when you've played so much and you have so much kind of intuition built into your game, if you adjust your sizings, people are going to play back differently than you're used to. And and a lot of those uh, kind of like that experience uh, not necessarily goes out the window, but uh, becomes less effective. And I think that a lot of my game is based on experience and, and um, I guess intuition is the right word, but really just uh, pattern recognition, observation over right. so many years. And so I am a little hesitant to change my sizings. In that spot, I do like to, I mean, I want to rep more than just the nuts. I can still pot without the nut flush draw. I can I can pot with other flushes, but um, I tend to prefer smaller sizing and and leaving uh, and and certainly would would do that with the nuts as well. Uh, I like kind of leaving him a little bit more room to shove, like not with my particular hand, but with my range. Uh, but no, I, I definitely am not going to sit here and say that you know that was that was the proper river sizing. I, I don't really know, and I don't know how much of a difference it makes uh, in that spot in particular. Um, in a spot where I'm repping nuts or nothing, then then I need to be potting uh, almost always. But, but that's mm -hmm. not one of those cases, I think. Yeah, I feel like um, from watching a lot of videos, you know, I think in your videos, you always talk about, it seems like when you end up showing up with a nut flush blocker, you have the nut flush, it seems like in a lot of spots like that, you do end up potting. But I guess the situation is different in this spot because you do check raise and you can have other hands besides. But I was thinking about what other hands could you really have there besides the nut flush there. Maybe the king high flush, I, I guess, but... Would you bet the 10 I flush that size? Probably, maybe. I'm not really sure. So I guess that's kind of what it comes down to is do you have the king would you bet the king high flush that size or or not? I think that I would, and I think I probably I think I probably against Ike would check though with weaker flushes in the King High Flush just because I like to give him an opportunity to bluff. Like he's he's some people are gonna weigh under bluff that spot, not turn enough made hands into bluffs, but he he will. Turn enough, you know, decent hands into bluffs. Try to bluff me off with a chop, or, or you know, bluff with a set, which some people, which you certainly should if you have any kind of diamond blocker. But a lot of people wouldn't. 
Um, so yeah, I, I might only be betting nuts and second nuts and maybe I should go bigger. Uh, definitely, you know, and it's, it's, it differs a lot from a spot where let's say flop is three diamonds and I bet three times right. and I'm not betting the 10 I flush pretty much unless I'm like, you know, third potting the whole way. So yeah, in this spot, there's only, you know, one bet. Once the diamond hits, there's only one bet goes in. So I, I don't think I need to, yeah, restrict it to nuts only. Dry ace play from Phil Galfond. And to complicate matters even further, Paxton doesn't even have one diamond in his hand. Galfon gets it done. 